So our covers are done. I really like um, the way they turned out and they feel nice and sturdy, which I like. So I'm just gonna set these aside for a moment and I wanna start working on the inside pages. So these are all the pages that I had cut down to get ready to put on the inside. Now, I, I want this to be a junk journal style, but not totally like a junk journal because I'm gonna be doing more than journaling in this. I wanna be in this every day, doing my planning, um, you know, scheduling, all that sort of thing. So that's kind of why I have, I picked the pages that I did. So I'm not gonna be adding too many embellishments to these pages, um, besides maybe some washi tape, maybe a little bit of sewing for some of like the pockets and things like that, but not too much. I'm not gonna be doing too much. So I'm gonna start by just getting things in order. So I have to decide what order I want everything to be in um, before I move forward. So let's see, and I'm usually to do this, what I like to do is I like to, you know, it looks like some of these are kind of mixed in here. So I like to take my different types of papers and separate them out into groups. So like these are, these are my ones that are either foldovers or, you know, that I might have to do something with before we put them in. These are my sort of daily pages that I had cut apart. My little, um, I'm calling them mad plans. They're kind of my mad plans here. So all those are there. Then I have some that aren't quite the right size. I'm actually, that was a little smaller too. And then I have just some decorative papers. So I'm gonna put those in a pile. And then these are, they're kind of decorative and I can use them. So I'm just gonna kind of put them in the decorative pile for now. And then I have these cardstock papers, these craft card papers. And then I have the rest of my just plain dotted papers. So I'm probably gonna have more of these, you know, in throughout than everything else, but I kind of want to split them all up. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start picking and choosing from each one of the piles um, until I have what I want, you know, to, um, the order that I want. And so the first thing I have to do is decide what page I want to be first. And in my bullet journal, I do like to have an index. So I think I'm gonna use one of these as my index. So I'm gonna have this one be my first page for sure. And then we'll go from there. So I'm just gonna kind of pick and choose and make myself a new stack with everything in order. And then I'll show you where we go from there. Okay, I have my pages all put together in the order that I want them. And I did leave out some of these extras that I'm gonna be using for flips um, or the ones, or the folded ones that I might want to fold back down. So I kinda of wanted to show you what I was gonna do with those um, as we went here. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna to need to be careful of, most of these pages are all the same size, but I do have a couple of pages that are not the same size, that are a little bit smaller. So when we punch holes, we just need to make sure we are aware of that so that we can get our holes where we want them on those pages. So you can have them different sizes, but you just wanna be aware of that when you're punching holes. And since uh, these are gonna be flips, they're not gonna have any holes, so I'm just gonna set those aside for now. And then these, I'm gonna have holes in them but we're going to use them as flip downs so um, I'm just going to I'm going to kind of do them separate. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the covers and I want I don't want to have a ring that goes all the way up and down. I think I'm going to do my ring about two inches in from um, either side and so I thought that I would grab a template. So this is about eight and a half inches tall 
should be about the size of my book. And actually, looks like these covers were a little bit, I must have cut them a little bit um, small. So that being said, maybe I should use this as my template here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of center these where I want them. And then I'm going to come in two inches from the top and the bottom and make a little mark. And let me just make sure my rings are going to go on this side. <laughs> Always double checking. And as you had seen earlier, I went ahead and did something backwards or upside down, I should say. Okay, so that's two inches from that side, and I think I didn't have it quite centered. So we'll start a little bit up there. Okay, and then two inches from this side is about here. So my rings are just going to go right in between here. So now, to do that, I kind of have to start my cutting on this side. So let's see here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my mark right on the edge here and then hopefully and now this cover is pretty thick so hopefully it'll fit in here. I know I've done covers before. Oof. Oof takes a little bit there. Okay so I think I have that lined up. Now I'm going to hope this cuts through. <laughs> Woo! It's a little elbow grease. And now I need to be sure I am... I should have started at the other side, I think. But we'll go ahead and do it this way. So now I need to make sure when I line this up... Let me do my mark on the inside here. So I'm just going to bring this around to this side so I know where to end. And it looks like I may only need about three more punches. So I'm going to line this up like this and get this. So if you've ever used a zutter, so there's this little thing on the side that you have to use to line up continuous punching. So I did my first punch. I should have started on this side or I should have started at the other side. And then now I can use, there's a little um, notch there that I can put one of the previous holes into so that I don't, um, so I have my holes spaced evenly, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna hold this down and once again, punch my punch there. And so now, I should have, and there was my mark right here, and my other mark was about right here. And so I think that looks really good. That's exactly what I wanted. Whoops, I mean, it's gonna go this way. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do, since I have that, I'm going to use that as my guide for my um, second one here. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to line these up for my first half. And I'm just making all of the marks so I kind of know where things should be. Okay, I'm sure I should have lined these up better, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this this whole mark that I had and I'm going to put it in there so that hopefully it's lined up pretty much the same. And let's see how I did. Oh, look at that. They line up just like I wanted them to. Whew. All right, so now I just have to check which one is my last one to be sure I don't go too far. So I just need three more. So this is where I'm gonna move that out of the way. And then I'm going to, oops. 
these pockets make it hard. Let me just tell you that. Okay, so I'm going to try to line that up so that I put the second one in there. Okay. Now, my notch is lined up and hopefully... Oops. Pull this out. All right, let's see how we did. I think we did smashingly. Now, the only thing, the reason um, I wanted to start with the covers is because the papers, since I realized the covers were a little bit bigger than eight and a half inch tall, um, I need to make sure that my holes don't, you know, put, I need to center the holes on my papers. So to do that, I am gonna grab this little template here. And I'm going to center this. on the back and I'm going to mark where my holes need to go on my inside pages. And so then since this is the right height, I can just line this up every time I put papers in. So let me kind of show you what I'm gonna do here. And I'm kind of gonna do the same thing. Now this um, looks like it, it should go in a little bit further. So this is just past the seven, it looks like, to get things started. And that's way easier to punch. <laughs> and now I need three more. So I will put my notch in at the second hole. And then punch my next one. Okay, so that is my template for all my pages. So now what I can do, of course, now I think I have it, I have it figured out. As long as I have this right past the seven, I should be good. Let me try. Let me try that. I'm going to move this out of the way. And actually, um, yeah, I'm going to do a couple at a time. Let's go crazy. Live on the edge and do a couple at a time. And we're going to do my first one without the notch. Make sure my bar is right here. Hold them together. Put this on the second one. And we should find my cover have an alignment, which we do. You can kind of, you can see through there. So now I'll be able to line them all up. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to do that for the rest of these pages. I'm just going to punch them and I am going to be sure I'm going to kind of go through and be sure that when I get to those couple pages that are smaller than eight and a half, that maybe I use my template again to line some lines up before I, I hole punch those and make sure they're centered in um, the punches are centered for me. Okay, I have all my papers punched. That took a little while. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to punch these ones that are uh, the flips. Now, this one is I think it's pretty much eight and a half by 11. So I could punch this one just like I did the other ones, which would be I have my marker here at seven and I'm punching it with the fold um, already folded and then move it out of the way, attach it to the second one. So I'm getting three more holes punched and now I have this punch. Now what I normally do, and let me just, uh, let me do, 
this one first before I tell you that. So that one's ready to go. I'm gonna punch this one. And to punch this one, if I want it centered in the page, I'm gonna use my template to kind of tell me where to do my first punch. So I'm just gonna kind of center my template over top of this shorter page. I'm gonna line up my first hole here with my first hole of my punch. And this will not be exact. Ooh but it should be close. And then I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before, is uh, line it up on the second hole punch and then punch the rest of the holes so that I have them all in there, okay? So now, let me move this out of the way. I wanna be able to put this in, but be able to flip this down. And obviously if I put my rings in with this folded, I won't be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna cut them off. Now this one only has three little holes here. So I'm just going to use my scissors to just make a little notch here and pull this off. So now you can see when my rings are in here, I still will be able to flip this up and down on its own. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Now I'm not very good all the time at using my scissors because you can see here I didn't quite go even. So I'm going to use my trusty cutter here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little cut that just goes up past this just a little bit, like maybe I'm going to cut a half an inch off. And then I'm going to do the same thing going down. Let me figure out the best way to hold this here. I kind of don't want to hold it this way, but I'm going to see if I can do it. Okay, so let me put this at the bottom. I'm lining up my half an inch. And then I can see where my cut is, so I'm just gonna carefully look at that. Not too shabby. So now, hopefully I did a little better job of making that straight, but the same thing. Now I can put my rings in and I don't have to worry about um, having that fold not work for me. So now I'm going to put these in where I want them. So I don't want them to be close by to each other. So I'm gonna put one somewhere around in the front, maybe like this. And then one I'll do closer to the back. And I think that that's gonna be perfect right there. Okay, so all my pages are in. Now the other thing that I'm gonna be just kind of looking at is making sure I'm gonna be using one and a quarter inch rings for this. So I don't want my uh, book to get probably much larger than this. With the covers on here, I think I'm at almost an inch. Yeah, I think I am. And I and that may even be a reason for me to take some of the pages out. And the reason I'm saying that is because I want to add more pages in. So I still need to put in my flips and things. And because of that, I, I want to give myself a little space. So I may go through and just pull out a couple of these double-sided dot pages, I think. So just here and there, not, you know, not too many. I don't know, maybe I'll take out like 10 of them or so, just so I know that I'm gonna have some extra room for the flips that I wanna have and not worrying about those. Now I did like, you can see, you know, I kinda did put a lot of dotted pages together. So I feel like I have enough you know, space to kind of take out some of them. And actually I did more towards the front than I did in the back. So probably I'll, you know, take out more as I go through the front of this. Let's see. Looks like now I'm kind of getting into, only have one, one there. So maybe I don't need to take out, or maybe I'm gonna need to take out some other pages. There's one, Oop, and that's the end. Okay, so how many did I take out here? Yeah. Okay, so that's good. That's about an eighth of an inch uh, that I took out, and that's probably gonna be good. Okay, so now this is a little bit smaller than an inch, which is what I wanted. And we can go ahead and we can bind this so that we can start having some fun with our end pages. And you can do this before or after. So let me just kind of show you what I'm gonna to do to decorate. So I'm just going to come in here a little bit. Let's see, 
And I'm gonna find, I'm gonna start with one of these craft papers and I'm gonna find a page that I'd like to do a flip on. Let's see, maybe we'll start with this one. And I'm gonna decide which side I want to be outside of the flip and which side I want to be inside of the flip. Now, just because this one's not as pretty, I think I'm gonna make that one be the outside of the flip. And when you're creating flips, you can make them as tall. The easiest way to do it is to make them as tall as your page and definitely make them shorter than the width of your page so that when they fold in, they won't you know, hit the rings on this side. So I'm just gonna grab some washi tape and we'll set this up. All right, I grabbed my washi tape roll and I love doing this in different colors. Um, you know, these are kind of dull colors right here. So grabbing a washi tape maybe that's kind of bright might be fun. Let's see if we can use this one. So this is what I'm gonna do on both sides. So I'm gonna take one page here. I'm trying not to mess up my order. So I'm just gonna put those over in the side there. Um, okay, so this is the page that I want to fold in. So here is the page or the side of the page that I want to have my tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to make this a straight, put this on a straight edge, and then I'm gonna take my washi tape and just about halfway, and sometimes it's kind of hard to see what halfway is. I'm just gonna put my washi tape down so that I have some tape on this side. And then what I can do is I can take this one and line it up. And you just need a teeny tiny little space, not a real big space for the fold. And then you put your washi tape, fold it up on this side, fold it up on this side. And then I like to um, reinforce it by adding a piece on the inside as well. And as you can see, I didn't line that up very good. Let's see if I can get that up without making a mess like I'm doing. <laughs> All right. So now when I do that, I'm just gonna press this down really good with my nail or with a bone folder or something because I really want it to stick. And then I have this fun little flap that I can put right in there. And then I can open that up and write in there if I need to or add some lists or whatever. So let me do one more that's not the same size just to show you that it is a little bit different. So let's go to another card. And this time let's try and attach the flap to the other side. So I'm gonna start with my, uh, I'm gonna find the piece that I'm gonna use. Let's see here. I think I cut this one. Um, because as you can see, my papers aren't the same size. So we're gonna have to do it a little bit different. I like to cut a piece that is the size of my smaller one or close to it. And once again, I'm gonna try to get this on halfway And then if you go over a little bit, you might wanna just trim it off just so you don't have anything hanging over the edge there. And then I wanted to try to put it on this side. So we want it to flip out this way. But you do the same thing. You're gonna just line it up. And then once again, I should have used a different washi tape. I didn't grab a different tape here. Let me finish up with this one since I started it. I like to use different washi tapes every time I do it. And then on this one, you're going to cut the tape, once again, just as big as the small one. And I don't mind having the torn edges, but if that bothers you, you could certainly um, use scissors to cut the edges if you wanted to. And for me, this isn't um, a science. <laughs> This is an art and I like it to look like a handmade. So now you can see I have a little bit here that went over. So I'm just gonna try to cut that off without cutting into my cardstock there. Okay, so now this one, when we 
have it in our book. We'll flip over this way and come out this way. So I love to do that. And then the other thing that I do like to do as well, for any of my papers that might be kind of plain like these, I sometimes like to come in with some washi tape and just do some fun things in there. So I have these cool washi tapes here with these little cute little dolls on them. And so what I'm gonna do for these is I don't cut these exact, I cut them a little bit big. If I'm just doing one paper, let's see if I can, once again, make sure I'm in camera here. So I'm gonna try to make this a straight line. And this is about, I think, a one inch tape here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. And I love this on the edge. And you can see I, I tried to do it halfway, it didn't quite, didn't quite get there. But then for one piece of paper, I can just fold this over so that my tape is on both sides. So now we have their cute little legs on this side. And then I just cut off the excess on the top and the bottom. But when these all get together in your book, they'll look really fun together. So you don't have to do that on every page, but I like to do it. Um, it's fun to kind of look at how it changes the edge of it. All right, I added some tapes to the ends of my papers. So I already am loving how that's looking. And now let's go ahead and get a wire on this thing. So what we need to do, I grabbed, um, this is a one and a quarter inch wire. And obviously I'm not gonna be using it all. So what I'm gonna do is I have to count how many holes I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine holes, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count that many loops and then cut it with a wire cutter. So I'm gonna start with the small loop, but I'm gonna count with the big loop. So the big loop here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that should give me nine small loops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is what we want, nine of each of those loops. And then I'm gonna cut this one kind of right in the middle of it. There. So now this I can put to the side because this is all we'll be using here. And then what you do to bind it using the zutter is you have to take the back, so you have it all the way you want it to be. You take the back cover and we're gonna wrap it around. So like I'm opening up the book here and I'm gonna put it on this side. So when we do that, the cinched part will be at the back cover and that's kind of, that's kind of what we wanna do. So now I'm going to put everything on and I think I'm going to, I'm just going to start flipping things over like this. Line up all my papers because I'm sure I've gotten them out of whack from punching, or I'm sorry, from adding things to it. And looks like I may have even gotten a couple things flipped upside down. <laughs> but hopefully we got this pretty straight. You just keep going like this until you have everything on there. And I might have another half sheet or something on there. Oops. Here we go. And hopefully this will all fit with this laying this, this way. We might have to just kind of hold it up a little to make it everything fit there the way we want it to. Okay, so now we have our rings all in there ready to go. And then what we do now is you have to line this up. So this front part now is our crimper. And so then I'm going to have to move it back since this is one and a quarter inch. And I think that's the biggest this goes. Just like that. So now I have this sort of bar here lined up with my one and a quarter inch. 
And then all you do, and now this is gonna be, I'm gonna have to do it sort of in two crimps because there's too many wires to fit right in here to do it with one. So I'm going to maybe do the first four here. And all you do is you just set it down in there. You have all your papers on the outside. So I'm putting my open end of the rings down in here. And then I'm just gonna gently give it a crimp there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the ones that didn't quite get done. And then I'm always afraid I'm gonna crimp too far. So I kinda, I try to go a little bit less at first. And then I'm just gonna kinda use my fingers to finish up any gaps that I might have here. Okay, so now when I put my covers back the way they should go, move that out of the way so you can see we have a beautiful ring bound binder and I like this because it flips easy things are flat I can write on them this is um, one of the reasons I like doing a ring bound uh, type journal for a planner because it's it works that way nicely but you can see I have my tapes on the sides of some things here all different kinds of things. I, I just love the way that kind of looks when you're doing some planning, you sort of have a have a place to start. I have a little flip here. Let me find one of our pages that we had. So now you can see it flips down without any problems. It doesn't hit the rings or anything there. And I have my, let's see if I can find a, a flip here. So here's one of my flips that comes open like that. And I think this looks great. All right, and there we have it, our bullet journal planner in the junk journal style. And I just pulled out just to kind of give you an example of how you could add um, sort of a title to this or a book plate to this if you wanted to. I don't want mine to be too bulky because like I said, this is gonna be you know something that I'm gonna be using every day. I don't want it ne to necessarily fall off or anything like that, but you could certainly add a label. I have a little bit of scrap fabric here, the kind of torn fabric to kind of give it a frame, which I love. But since I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna put on this label, I think I might just just leave it off for now but I can always come back and do it later even after I'm done this maybe I'll come back and put a label on to put the dates that I used for here so that if I want to pull it back out I have it but I just wanted you to know that there are some options that you have for this so thanks so much for watching friends and joining me today I hope that you enjoyed this video leave me a comment below and let me know if you like to do bullet journaling and let me know if maybe you think you'll try the junk journal style <laughs> I'd love to know if you're interested in doing this kind of thing thanks so much for watching friends I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.